So if you're anything like me, you update your iPhone from time to time and never really see any new features unless Apple makes it front and center. But on a few occasions each year, Apple adds new features that don't make the spotlight but are worth knowing about. Today, I'm going to show you five of them. Stick around. Hi, my name is Rich and I try to crank out weekly, easy to follow videos on how to use your iPhone and iPad, you know, without going nuts. Both of these devices have about a thousand things going on at any one time, but honestly, most of that stuff I don't care about. But occasionally, a few hidden gems grab my attention. Now, I'm running iOS 18.5 on my iPhone 16 Plus in today's video, so if you haven't already updated your iPhone to at least this version, Make sure you do so you can find this stuff. So today I'm going to cover the new sound therapy feature in music. That's kind of cool. The new ambient music button in Control Center so you can get quick access to music. How to connect ChatGPT to Siri. Now that's a crazy new feature I didn't see coming. How to scan and sign a document using the Files app Quick Action, which is a little bit different. And then four crazy calculator tips I have never seen before. Be sure to stick around for this because these tips are so handy. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first up is the new sound therapy feature. If you go into Apple Music, you open it up, and if you go to the search button down here on the right, you're going to see a new feature here called sound therapy. Now, I didn't know what sound therapy was, but apparently there's a lot of science behind the type of music you listen to and whether it relaxes you or makes you more productive and there's all kinds of stuff that go into it. And that's what this is all about. And there's an explanation of how sound therapy works if you want to read it. But in essence, you've got a sound therapy for focus, you've got one for relaxing, you've got one for sleep. And for example, if I just go up here and I tap on the focus, then you get a whole bunch of different uh, pieces of music in here. So I'll just hit play. I don't know, I guess I feel focused already. But there's just different music here. And of course, um, you can skip to the next one if you want something else that makes you focused. And it will just play through all of that. But it's a it's a new feature and it's in music and you can just, you know, set your iPhone somewhere, tap on that and listen to some music while you're working. It's pretty cool. Okay, next up is just the ambient music feature in Control Center. So it's kind of a weird place to put it, but it's there. So if you go into Control Center, I've already customized my Control Center to the way I like it, but if you tap and hold, and go add control and you scroll down now you have this new feature of ambient music so I'm just gonna add each one there's for sleep for chill for productivity and for well-being and I guess this is somewhat similar to the sound therapy feature I just showed you in Apple music but here it's in control center now I can never remember what those are for, so I'm just going to drag this down here and I'm going to make it a little bit wider and I'll do the same thing with this one so I can see that it says ambient music for sleep, for chill. I'll drag this one down there like that and I'll make it a little bit wider. I'll do the same thing right here. And I'll make it a little bit wider like that. And so now, if I want to, I can just go into Control Center and I can tap on Sleep Music. Now, I don't know if that'll make me fall asleep or not, but it's there if you want it. You've got chill music that's ambient in nature. And by the way, if you have uh, Dynamic Island up at the top, you can just tap on Dynamic Island and you can skip to the next song if you want to. Just like that. 
And those are the new ambient buttons in Control Center. I think that's pretty cool, pretty handy too. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is how to connect your iPhone to ChatGPT. So if you don't know what ChatGPT is, it's a new uh, artificial intelligence. You know, Apple have been talking about their artificial intelligence and it just never seemed to come into being. But now they allow you to connect your iPhone to ChatGPT. So let me show you how to do that. If you go into settings and you go down to Apple intelligence, and then you kind of scroll down, you'll see where it says ChatGPT. If you tap on ChatGPT, you can go to Setup. And now all you have to do is hit Next. And this shows that ChatGPT integrates with Siri, gives you more visual intelligence and a few cool features. If you hit Next, this tells you about privacy in ChatGPT and the way it preserves your privacy. And then you can just tap on Enable ChatGPT. And that's it. Now you've got it finished. And now you can ask Siri really complex questions. For example, what is the percentage of defense spending as a part of gross national product? And here you get it, 4% of GDP. Just like that. How has the U.S. budget grown since 1900? And look at this, the U.S. budget has grown significantly since 1900, and it shows exactly what it is through time. And if you tap on it, it'll take you to the article where you can read even more information about it. Prior to connecting ChatGPT to Siri, you would never get that kind of answer. So it's amazing the complex questions you can ask. You can ask medical questions. How does Ativan interact with macular degeneration. So here you get a very detailed answer right there. That's just amazing. And that's how you connect ChatGPT to your iPhone. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is just how to scan a document into the Files app. Now, I don't have a big need for this, but every once in a while I do need to scan something. So I have a form here, just an IRS form. Uh, a 941 form, and I'm going to scan that. Okay, if I just tap and hold, and tap Scan Document, and I'm going to just scan this document like that. And I'm going to tap on Save. Now I can name it. I'm going to name it 941 because that's the form. I'm going to hit Return. And here it is, the 941 document. And if I tap on it, you can see that there's a whole bunch of little forms on there and it's kind of hard to see, but you can actually turn this into a form that you can fill out. You can tap on auto fill form and it actually turns all of those areas into where you can take your finger, tap into it and fill out the form. I don't think I'd ever want to do that on my iPhone because that's just so small. So that doesn't work for me. But occasionally I do need to sign something. So I'm going to turn off the form feature. I'm going to tap the pencil. I'm going to choose a pencil. And I'm going to just make this a little bigger and I'm going to sign. Just like that. And then you click done. And now you've got a signed form. Just like that. So you can actually use the Files app to both scan and sign a document. And I've got it here in iCloud, but I've got a folder called Tax Documents, so I could tap and hold and drag it down into the Tax Document folder. And now there's the 941 form in the Tax Document folder. And that's just a cool little feature using Quick Actions on the Files app to scan a document and to sign it. Pretty cool. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is just a few calculator tips. Now, there's a new calculator app on the iPhone. I've got it right here, and I'm going to tap on it and open it. If you can see, it looks just like a regular calculator. I can type 56 times 31 equals, and I've got a number there. I can clear that out. But the power in this thing is not just doing simple calculations like that. If you notice, there's a little calculator icon down here. If I tap on that 
and I go to convert, now I can convert things. So I've got US dollars to Euro. So if I type 85 US dollars, that equals 75 Euro, 75.32 Euro. I can tap backwards and go back and I can take 52 and I can do any kind of conversion there. But here's where it's really crazy. You can tap up here and choose what you want to convert. There's all different kinds of things you can convert. So let's go to, um, we'll go to speed and we'll choose miles per hour. And now it's going to convert it to kilometers. So let's go 55 equals 88.51 kilometers per hour. And since I can't drive 55, it's kind of nice to know that I can say I'm driving 88, but at least it's in kilometers. So I can back that off. I can change that. I can put 96, and you can see what the speeds are. Now, if you notice, I tap that to erase that, but if you actually just tap and hold, it'll just delete it just like that. And there's all kinds of things that you can convert in here. There's temperature. We'll do that and we'll go Fahrenheit and it'll change it to Celsius. So if I type in 32 Fahrenheit is zero Celsius. So it converts all different kinds of things. I think what's really handy for me um, is converting weight. So we will choose ounces and now it'll go to grams. So if I have 50, 50 ounces of something, I have 1,417 grams. So there's just all different kinds of ways that you can convert and that's all hidden right down here in the convert feature. Now if I turn that back off we get back to a regular calculator and the next thing I want to show you is you just have a history of all this. So up here is a little icon, a little hamburger icon, and you can tap on that. And now you have all of the history of what you've done before. So if you notice, I did that 56 times 31. We can go back and see things that we've done before. It keeps a running total of all of that, of all of your history. And what's interesting about that is the next feature. So if I just take and hold, I can copy that number, 1265, and now if I go to something new and I want to go 85 plus 32 plus, and then the number that I just copied, I can tap and hold and tap paste, and now I can do equals, and I've got that calculation. So you can do calculations, get a result, copy the result, and then paste it into a new calculation. So this next feature is kind of cool. It's where you can actually use handwriting. And let me show you how that's done. If you tap and hold on here, you can go to Math Notes. And this creates a note, a math note, here in Calculator. And it also saves it over in Apple Notes. So if I tap on the little icon here, and let's say I do 44 divided by 2. It gives the result right there equals 22. And if I hit return and come down a couple of spaces, I can now do another calculation. But I can also do something in writing. So if I take this little pencil right there and I just start writing 44 divided by 22 equals, and now it gives the result. 44 divided by 22 equals 2. If I tap on that number, I get a little slider up here and I can actually slide that and change it. Look how the number changes, 43, 45, 50 divided by 22, and it changes the results over here just by sliding around. So, And you can do the same thing on any handwritten number that you have. That's just an incredibly cool little feature. I don't know how much I'll use that slider feature, but it's certainly there if you need it. And those are some really cool calculator tips. My guess is if I hadn't been digging around on my iPhone, I wouldn't have found these features, but here they are. Okay, that's it for today. I hope this short tutorial was helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.